I want to make one final statement of homage to Richard Gardner, who first identified the parental alienation pathogen. While no Gardnerian banner will fly on this battlefield, that's not to say that he was incorrect in identifying the presence of the pathogen, and that we don't owe him a debt of gratitude for his courage. He didn't realize just how malignant, vicious, and complex this pathogen is. When he penetrated the pathogen's veil of concealment, he triggered the other defensive structures of this pathogen to viciously attack and to seek allies. In reviewing the history of parental alienation, I was struck by the level of unnecessary vicious criticism that was directed towards Richard Gardner. He saw a pathogen. He alerted his professional colleagues regarding the existence of this pathogen. This does not warrant the attack of such intensity and ferocity. While his initial efforts to define the pathogen may have lacked sufficient professional rigor, his contribution in identifying the existence of the hidden pathogen of parental alienation is to be commended and properly recognized. The attachment-based model of parental alienation can account for the seven of the eight symptoms indicators of Gardnerian PAS, although sometimes as an amalgam of several different constructs. The only symptom indicator of Gardnerian in PAS that I can't account for in an attachment-based model of parental alienation is the rejection of the extended family of the targeted parent. There's no linkage for why this particular symptom would occur in an attachment-based model, yet I've seen this symptom several times in clinical practice. I suspect that the child's rejection of extended family may have less to do with the pathology than with the nature of the attachment system. The structure of the attachment system may be in a sort of wheel and spokes configuration of attachment bonding, with the primary parental attachment figure at the center hub of the wheel, so that when the child cuts off attachment bonding motivations towards the parent at the hub of the wheel, the people who are along the spokes emanating from the hub of the parent are also cut off. But this is simply a conjecture without supporting evidence yet. Richard Gardner was the first to enter this new domain of complex family psychopathology, and he was forced to pay a terrible price in professional and personal, personal condemnation for his courage. Well, I can understand and would agree with that his theoretical formulation for the pathology of parental alienation was less than what was needed and lacked a solid scientific foundation. This is, in my view, both understandable and eminently forgivable for the first pioneer to enter and explore a new domain of psychopathology. In identifying the hidden pathogen of parental alienation, Richard Gardner gave voice to the suffering of parents, and by giving a name to their suffering, he brought comfort and solace in their grief. The time has come to solve parental alienation for all children and all families. To do so requires that we relinquish Richard Gardner's early model in favor of a more advanced reformulation of the pathology. This is the way of science, to move forward in extending the depth of our understanding. But because we're relinquishing an older model for a newer one, that doesn't mean we don't owe a debt of immense gratitude and respect for the pioneer who first penetrated the pathogen's veil of concealment, and who had the courage and fortitude to then endure the attacks that followed. While no Gardnerian banner will fly on this battlefield, I'm certain that Richard Gardner would understand why, and that he would agree with the decision to withhold his banner from this current battlefield if, by doing so, we're able to disable and overcome this vicious and malignant pathogen that he first identified. Richard Gardner passed away in 2003 by suicide, perhaps influenced by the vicious attacks from this pathogen. In our coming battle, I hope that his spirit will be with us and will find peace in our ultimate defeat of this pathogen that he first identified.